Hi, there are two main concepts that we look at in Module 8. The first thing is how do we estimate the population proportion P using the sample proportion P hat? We do that with a confidence interval and that's what we're going to do in part one of the Module 8 videos. The other main concept is a hypothesis test. A hypothesis test is where we make a claim about the population proportion that either it's, equal, it's not equal to a value, it's bigger than a value, or it's less than a value. That we'll look at in part two of the module eight videos. Okay, so the first thing is we typically do not know the value of a population proportion P. So we must estimate it with a sample proportion P hat. Using a sample proportion instead of the population proportion gives us the estimated standard error. Now in module seven, we saw that the true standard deviation was the square root of P, one minus P over N. But we typically do not know the value of P. So we have to do the next best thing. We have to estimate it with what we do know, which is p hat. That is why it's called an estimated standard error. Instead of using the letter sigma, we use the letter s. In statistics, we often use the estimated standard error to approximate the standard error. The estimated standard error is not the same value as the standard error for a population, but it's a good estimate. Now, we need to check for normality. So we don't have to do NP bigger than or equal to 10, NP and one minus P bigger than or equal to 10. We don't know the value of P. So we need to have at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures. The next thing we're going to need for a confidence interval. If we want a 90% confidence interval, we're going to be using a Z critical value of 1.645. That is the Z value that we, that gives, that is the Z value that gives us a data set where 90% of the data is between a Z value of negative 1.645 and positive 1.645. 1 then for a 95% confidence interval, we're no, using, no longer using the value of two. The value of two was the empirical rule. That was an estimate. The true Z value, the true Z critical value is 1.96. And finally, for a 99% interval, the Z critical value is 2.576. Okay, next, what does it mean to be a confidence interval? Well, the confidence, we talked about this a little bit in module seven. The confidence of the interval has different interpretations. In statistical theory, the confidence level, for example, a 95% interval, is the proportion of all possible confidence intervals that actually contain the population proportion. Now remember, if we were to construct sample after sample after sample, we would get slightly different sample proportions which would give us slightly different confidence intervals. So for a 95% confidence interval, that would mean of all the different confidence intervals that we could construct, 95% of them will contain the true population proportion P. 5% of them will not contain it. Now, the confidence level measures how sure we are that our interval actually contains the true population proportion. We build our interval around the sample proportion. And of course, we use the estimated standard error to get the margin of, to get the margin of error. Now we can never be 100% certain that our interval contains the population proportion, 
But for 95% interval, for example, we're 95% confident that any one confidence interval contains the population proportion. So, when we, when we interpret a confidence interval in theory, we say the confidence level is the proportion of similarly constructed intervals that contain the true population proportion. And when we interpret a confidence interval in practice, we say the confidence levels describes how confident or sure we are that the population proportion is in the in Now, we know that in order con to construct a confidence interval, it's the sample proportion p hat plus or minus the margin of error. The margin of error is the z critical value that we looked at earlier times the estimated standard error. Okay, so how do you compute the confidence interval? Well, first of all, you have to make sure that our random sample has at least 10 successes and 10 failures. That's for normality. Now, for the different confidence, for the specific confidence uh, level we're looking at, get the z critical value. Compute the margin of error. So we also need the p hat. And construct the confidence interval. That's p hat minus the margin of error, p hat plus the margin of error. Okay. So, let's look at an example here. Imagine we have conducted a survey to learn what college students think about aliens. In a random sample of 758 college students, 159 of them believe aliens have been watching and monitoring the Earth for many years. So, first of all, normality is met. The conditions for normality. We have 159 successes. And the number of failures is the grand total of 758 minus the 159, 599 failures. They're both bigger than or equal to 10. 159 is bigger than or equal to 10. 599 is bigger than or equal to 10. So normality is satisfied. Next, what is the p hat value? 159 over 758, 0.21. The z critical value. Now again, if we're trying to construct a confidence interval here for a if we're trying to construct a confidence interval at the 99% level, we want to be 99% confident that the population proportion lies in the interval, then the z critical value is 2.576. What's the margin of error? 2.576 times the square root, 0.21, 1 minus 0.21 over 758. Remember that 0.21 is the p hat, so the margin of error is 0 0.038. How do you construct the interval? p hat minus the margin of error, p hat plus the margin of error. So we're 99% certain or confident that the true population proportion of college students that believe aliens have visited the earth is somewhere between 17.2 and 24.8 percent. Okay, and remember, the more confidence we want in the interval, and let's say 99 instead of 95, then we have to have a wider interval, a wider margin of error. 